Sometimes when you're out there shopping and you go to an antique shop or a thrift store or a flea market and you find one really cool thing and then the rest of the day all you do is look for similar things to that thing. aware of it the whole time and like trying to shake it off. I don't even like buying copper and brass, you guys. It's heavy. They're expensive to ship. But for whatever reason, on this glorious day at the flea market, one of the very first things that I found was this incredible tiny little box. People really like vintage jewelry boxes, trinket boxes. Now this particular box, it's made out of solid brass. It's incredibly heavy. It definitely has some age to it. This is an antique beetle nut box and so you can use these for spices, you can use these for herbs, but the majority of these were used for beetle nut storage. It's actually a stimulant. You can chew on a beetle nut and it's gonna give you like a rush of energy and so it's got all these like little compartments inside. You can kind of see like it's definitely used. And for $5, I'm taking this home. Honestly, really obsessed with this whole like design. I think it's really beautifully made. It's got some really cool detailing to it. Cool, I found this awesome little box and I'm obsessed with this little box. My brain is just like, okay, look for brass gold. Look for the brass gold items. That's all. And this dealer has all kinds of really cool little things, right? And then I see this. I like these fireplace screens. They're just so heavy and they're so big and they're expensive to ship. But if you can get them for a good price, like it's definitely worth grabbing them. These actually have a really cool look. So they're very Victorian. They have a very Gothic look. They've got like little gargoyles down here at the base, which has a really cool design to it. You just unclip the sides and you open it up and it's got like this whole peacock look to it. And it's got this whole tail that spreads out, and you put this in front of your fireplace. They're very collectible. They go anywhere from $100 to $200. He only wanted $10 for it. So I'm kind of like, how do you say no to a $10 peacock fireplace screen like this? You don't. You take that home with you. It's very cool. It's actually in really good condition. Here are the little gargoyles down here at the bottom just doing their little gargoyle thing. You just open it up, and then these things just like have their little moment. Whoa! And like, I kind of didn't want him to give me a price of $10. I wanted him to be like, that's $452. So that I could be like, oh, okay. And go home without it. Now I'm carrying this through the flea market like a psycho. There's a whole thing happening subconsciously at this point that I'm not even aware of just yet. But all of these brass and copper items are slowly oozing into my brain. And then pretty soon, that's gonna be all that I'm able to buy. Cause the next thing that I find is this incredible vintage fire extinguisher. And I love a good vintage fire extinguisher. Again, you have the problem with weight. You have the problem with size. They're very expensive to ship. Some of these fire extinguishers can go for a lot of money. This is a quick aid fire extinguisher, which is not that valuable of a brand. It's not super old. One thing I will say is you do want to make sure that you're able to open them. Some of these have like fused shut over the years, depending on how they were stored. If you can't open it, don't buy it. If you're trying to sell it and you need to ship it, you need to be able to open it, but you are not allowed to sell something like this unless you can prove that it's empty. And the best way to do that is to open it up and take photos of the inside of it. He only wanted $10 for it. So here we are, of course. Now I'm buying fire extinguishers. I haven't put together in my mind yet that I'm only buying brass pieces. So <laughs> it keeps happening. It keeps happening. Then the next thing that I see he also has is this trombone. This is an HN white trombone, and this is a really, really old piece. It's super collectible. HN white is 
a really, really good manufacturer. This company was started by a man named Henderson White, who was born in the 1800s and he lived all the way up until the 1940s. His entire life was dedicated to creating some of the best quality musical instruments that you're ever gonna find from that time. He made trumpets and trombones, all kinds of different horns. He had a really amazing legacy and this was one of his pieces. This guy only wants $20 for this antique trombone that has a really amazing history and the maker has a really great story. So you're supposed to be able to do this, but there's nothing that holds them together. So it's actually missing stuff. It has two of the main pieces and he doesn't want a lot for it. I don't know what to do. I guess I'm just gonna buy it and I'm not even gonna realize it until it's too late. And that's what I do. I'm like, I'll take it. And so now I have <laughs> A trombone that is not even functional. Not even functional. I still really like it. You can kind of see it's got like the maker's marks on the front. No, but in all honesty, I bought this trombone because it's a really expensive brand. It's not like they're making replacement parts for these. So I did buy this because it was so cheap. I'm probably gonna split it up and sell these as replacement parts. So somebody will be willing to pay for those parts individually. So it does make sense, but also it was at this moment that I realized something's happening. I am buying brass things that are missing pieces. I needed at this point to have a reality check. Am I going down a very dangerous road? And so I'm like, no, 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 no. This can't happen. I just got here. This is the first place that I visited and my cart's already full of things that I'm not quite sure I'm gonna agree with later on in the day. I've gotta switch this up. What else is here that's not brass that I can buy? Maybe I'll change my whole like mindset. That's the idea behind this. I see something that looks crazily vintage, very like 1960s floral pattern. And it is like this cast iron enamel pot with like a lid. It's got flowers bursting out all over it. This is from a line called Pioneer Woman. This is a pot with a pattern called vintage floral. So this is new. This isn't even like vintage, like 1960s. This is literally something that's still being made till this day. And they have a huge line of like all kinds of cookware with these like flower explosions all over them. And I'm kind of intrigued and I'm kind of like, I need to get out of this brass rut. So like, how much is your Pioneer Woman pot? He wanted $10 for it. These things go anywhere from $40 to $50. And this might be a good way to get out of my rut. My new Pioneer Woman pot. Super florally. The flower explosion on this is uh, next level. Even the lid to this pot is, um, florally. I don't even think this has ever been used. Pioneer woman. I think this will be a good solution to the brass problem. It's cast iron, it's enamel, like maybe I'll be over the whole brass situation. And so I go to the next booth and they have all of these cast iron irons. And I'm like, yes, we switched from brass to cast iron. So I'm like looking through these irons. They had so many, you guys, they had like a van full of these things and the majority of them were not actually worth anything at all. Can anybody explain to me why with an entire booth full of cast iron irons, I only walk away with a brass one? I'm like a fish, you know, fish that are like, attracted to the shiny little lures going through the ocean. All you gotta do is put a little bit of glitter on it and the fish is like and then it's dead two hours later. Apparently that is what's happening today. I was even aware of the brass situation prior to entering the cast iron iron situation and I still left with a brass iron. This is not, this is not gonna end well. Thankfully they were only asking $10 for this thing. So these things are fairly valuable. This will sell for 40 or 50 bucks. So like, it's not that big of a deal, but also like why the brass? We need to ask ourselves these difficult questions. It's 2020. I need to get something different. I need to like get out of this space in my mind of only looking for shiny gold brass. Don't look at brass, don't look at brass. Just look at things that are maybe like crazy and weird and then maybe that'll like shake your brain up a little bit. And I see this statue that looks super weird and super odd. This is from an artist named Judy Bomberger, who is an American artist. She's done some really, really amazing work. And what's really cool about this artist, she actually uses a lot of different materials. We've got people that specialize in different mediums and she covers the spectrum. The most popular stuff you're gonna find by this artist, she does a lot of really incredible iron, 
figurines and statues that are all gonna be signed by her. But she also has some really incredible pottery work and plaster work. It's got a very like surreal look to it. It's actually really cool. And this artist has some really, really incredible stuff. If you ever find anything from her, it's usually pretty valuable. And they were only asking $2 for this. I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna hope that this like resets my brain. I'm not unhappy with all of the brass stuff that I found. I'm like happy with it, but also you don't wanna get in a rut like that. The next thing that I find, oh my gosh. Really? Really? And this I actually love. Like I actually love this and I'm like, what is happening? in the universe. I mean, seriously, you guys, it's all hand hammered. It's old. Look at this, these handles are incredible. But then on the inside, you've got a place that you would actually put plants so that this is gonna hold up the plants and then you can put rocks or you can put dirt or whatever you need and this would be used as like a planter. I love this, I'm not even ashamed of it. And you know what, at this point, I just have to accept the fact that like, this is where the day is gone. This is just where the day is gone. Like I am just need to be okay. None of these prices were outrageous. They only wanted $10 for this. And this I actually really like. I actually really like this. So I can't even be upset. But anytime I can find like vintage hand hammered copper and brass, I am like, all about that. I would actually be curious to know, do any of you guys collect brass figurines or have you ever found anything that's super valuable or collectible that's brass? I do have these like tiny little elephant figurines that I got while I was in Colombia, and I just kind of like leave them on a shelf in my house and it's like kind of a cool thing. I look at them and I, have these memories of Columbia. So I'd be interested to hear what your guys' brass collectibles are or what you guys have found that is brass. Leave your comment in the comment section below. I'm super excited to read your responses. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.